I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. As long as I get somewhere, Alice added as an explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat, if only you walk long enough. Alice felt this was this could not be denied, so she tried another question. What sort of people live about here? In that direction, the, the cat said, waving its right paw around, lives a hatter. And in that direction, waving the other paw, lives a March hare. Visit either you like. They're both mad. But I, I don't want to go among mad people, Alice remarked. Oh, you can't help that, said the cat. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. Alice didn't think that that proved it at all. However, she went on. And how do you know that you're mad? To begin with, said the cat, a dog's not mad. You grant that? I, I suppose so, said Alice. Well then, the cat went on, you see a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. Now I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. I call it purring, not growling said Alice. Call it what you like, said the cat. Do you play croquet with the Queen today? Uh, I, I should like it very much, said Alice, but I haven't been invited yet. You'll see me there, <laughs> said the cat and vanished. Alice was not much surprised at this. She was getting so well used to queer things happening. While she was still looking at the place where it had been, it suddenly uh, appeared again. By the by, what became of the baby? said the cat. I'd nearly forgotten to ask. It, it turned in, into a pig, Alice answered very quietly, just as if the cat had come back in a natural way. <laughs> I thought it would, said the cat, and vanished again. Alice waited a little, half, in, half expecting to see it again, but it did not appear. And after a minute or two, she walked in the direction in which the March Hare was said to live. I've seen hatters before, she said to herself. The March Hare will be much the most interesting, and perhaps, as this is May, it won't be raving mad, at least not so mad as it was in March. As she said this, she looked up, and there was the cat, again sitting on a branch of a tree. Did you say pig or fig? said the cat. I said pig, replied Alice, and I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly you can make one quite giddy all right <laughs> said the cat and this time it vanished quite slowly beginning with the end of the tail and ending with the grin which remained for some time after the rest of it had gone well i've often seen a cat without a grin thought alice but a grin without a cat. It's the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. She had gone 
not gone much further before she came in sight of the house of the March Hare. She thought it must be, must be the right house because the chimneys were shaped like ears and the roof was thatched with fur. It was so large a house she did not like to go nearer till she had nibbled some of the left-hand bit of mushroom and raised herself to about two feet high. Even then, she walked up towards it rather timidly, tr saying to herself, Suppose it should it should be Raven Mad after all. Oh, I almost wish I'd gone to see the Hatter instead. Chapter 7 A Mad Tea Party There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. A Dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep, and the other two were using it as a cushion, resting their elbows on it, talking over its head. Very uncomfortable for the Dormouse, thought Alice. Only as it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. Oh, no room! No room! No room! No room! They cried out when they saw Alice come in. There's plenty of room, said Alice indignantly. And she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. Oh, would you like some wine? The marsh said in an encouraging tone. Yeah, come on. Alice looked around the table, and but there was nothing on it but tea. I don't see any any wine, she remarked. Oh, there isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it, said Alice angrily. Well, it wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited, said the March Hare. I didn't know it was your table, said Alice. It's late for a great many more than three. Your hair wants cuffing, said the Hatter. He had been looking at Alice for some time with great curiosity, and this was his first speech. You should learn not to make personal remarks, Alice said with some severity. It's very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide on hearing this, and all he said was, Why is a raven like a writing desk? Come, oh come, we shall have some, some fun now, thought Alice. I'm glad they've begun asking riddles. I believe I can guess that, she added out loud. Oh, do you mean that you... You think you can find out the answer to it? Said the, uh, the Hatter. Exactly so. Said Alice. Then you should say what you mean. The, said the March Hare. I, I do, Alice hastily remark, replied. At least, at least I, I mean what I say that that's the same thing, you know. That's not the same thing. Not the same thing a bit, said the Hatter. Why, you might have just as well say that I see what, what I eat. It's the same thing as I eat what I see. You might as well... Might just as well say, added the March Hare, that I like... What I get is the same thing as I get what I like. You could say, you might as well say, added the Dormouse, which seemed to be talking in its sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the, the same thing with you said the Hatter, and here the conversation dropped, and the party sat silent for a minute, while Alice 
thought over all she could remember about ravens and writing desks, which wasn't much. The Hatter was the first to break the silence. What day of the month is it? He said, turning to Alice. He had taken his watch out of his pocket and was looking at it uneasily, shaking it every now and then and holding it to his ear. Alice cons considered her a little and then said, The fourth. Oh, oh two days wrong. Oh, sighed the Hatter. I told you Butter wouldn't suit the works. <laughs> he added, looking angry at the March Hare. It was the best butter, the March Hare meekly replied. Yes, but some crumbs must have been got in, in, it, in it as well, the Hatter grumbled. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have put it in with a bread knife. The March Hare took the watch and looked at it gloomily. Then he dipped it in his cup of tea and looked at it again. But he could think of nothing better than to say than his first remark. It was the best butter, you know. Alice had been looking over his shoulder with some curiosity. What a funny watch, she remarked. It tells the day of the month and doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it? muttered the Hatter. The, does your watch tell you what year it is? Oh, of course, of course not. Alice replied very readily. But that's because it stays the same year for such a long time together. Which is just the case with mine, said the Hatter. Alice felt dreadfully puzzled. The Hatter's remark seemed, seemed to her to have no sort of meaning in it, in it, and yet it was certainly English. I don't quite understand you, she said as politely as she could. Oh, the Dormouse is asleep again, said the Hatter, and he poured a little hot tea upon its nose. The Dormouse shook its head impatiently and said without opening its eyes, Of course, of course, just what I was going to remark myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet? Said the Hatter said, turning to Alice again. Um, no, I, oh, no, I, I give it up, she replied. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, <laughs> said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. I think you might do something better with, your, with the time, she said, than wasting it in, in asking riddles that have no answers. Oh, if you knew time as well as I do, said the Hatter, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. <laughs> it's him. I do not know what you mean, she, Alice said. Of course you don't, said the, the Hatter said, tossing his head un uncontemptuously. I dare say you've never even spoken to time. Perhaps not, Alice cautiously replied, but I know I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, oh, that accounts for it, said the Hatter. He won't stand beating. Now, if you only kept on good terms with him, he'll do almost anything you like with the clock. For instance, suppose it were, it were um, the nine o'clock in the morning. Just just time to begin lessons. You'll only have to whisper a hint to time. And round goes the clock in a twinkling. Half past one. Time for dinner. <laughs> I only wish it was. The March Hare said to himself in a whisper. That would be grand, certainly. Said Alice thoughtfully. But then I wouldn't be hungry for it, you know. Oh, not at first, perhaps, said the Hatter, but you could keep it to half past one as long as you like. Is that the way you manage? 
Alice asked. The Hatter shook his head mournfully. Oh, not I! He replied. We crawled last March, just before he went bad, (laughs) you know. Pointing hit with his teaspoon at the March Hare. It was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts. And I had the thing. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder why what you're at. Do you know the song, perhaps? I've heard something like it, said Alice. It goes on, you know. The Hatter continued. In this way, up above the world you fly like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Here the Dormouse shook itself and began singing in its sleep. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. And went on as long as, as long as, as long that they had to pinch, pinch it to make it stop. Well, I hardly finished the first verse, said the Hatter, when the Queen bawled out, his murder in time, off with his head. How dreadfully savage, exclaimed Alice. And even thi- and ever since then, you know, since that, you know, <laughs> the Hatter went on in a mournful tone, he won't do a thing I ask. It's always been six o'clock now. A bright idea came into Alice's head. Is that the reason so many tea things are out, are put out here? She asked. Yes, that's it, said the cat hatter with a hat sigh. Oh, it's always tea time. And we're, and we've no time to wash the, th- wash the things between whale, whiles. Oh. Then you keep moving around, I, I suppose, said Alice. Exactly so, said the Hatter, as the things get used up. But what happens when you come back to the beginning again? Alice ventured to ask. Oh, su- oh suppose, I suppose we change the subject, said the March Hare, interrupted, yawning. Oh, I'm getting tired of this. I thought this, the young lady tells us a story. Well, I'm afraid I don't know one, said Alice, rather alarmed at the proposal. Well then, the Dormouth! Yes, the Dormouth! Shall, they both cried, wake up, Dormouth! Yeah, wake up, come on, wake up! And they pinched it on both sides at once. Once, The Dormouth slowly opened its eyes. I wasn't asleep. It said in a hoarse, feeble voice. I own heard every word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story, said the March Hare. Oh, yes, please do, replied Alice. And be quick about it, added the Hatter, or you'll be asleep again before it's done. Oh, um, uh, once upon a time. There were three little sisters, the Dormouse began in a great hurry. Their names were Elsie, Lacey and Tilly, and they lived in the bottom of a well. What did they live on? said Alice, who was always, who always took a great interest in questions of eating and drinking. Um, they lived on treacle said the Dormouse, after thinking a a minute or two. They couldn't have done that, you know, Alice gently remarked. They would have been, they would, they'd have been ill. So they were, said the Dormouse, very ill. Alice tried a, a little too fancy to herself what sort of such an extraordinary way of living would be like. But it puzzled her too much. So she went on. But why did they live at a, at the bottom of a well? Here, yeah, take some, take me some more tea. The March Hare said to Alice very earnestly. 
I've, I've had nothing yet, Alice replied in an offended tone, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion, said Alice. Now, who's making the parcel remarks now? <laughs> the Hatter asked triumphantly. Alice did not quite know what to say to this, so she helped herself to some tea and bread and butter, and then turned to the Dormouse and re repeated her question. Why did they live in, at the bottom of a well? The Dormouse again took a minute or two to, to think about it, and then said, um, It was a treacle well. Well, there's no such thing, Alice was beginning, was beginning very angrily. But the Hatter and the March Hare went, shh, 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 shh. And the Dormouse sulkily remarked, If you can't be civil, you better finish the story yourself. Oh, no, no, please go on, Alice said very humbly. I won't interrupt you again. I dare say there may be one. One indeed, said the Dormouse indignantly. However, he, con he cons consented to, to go on. And, there's, and so these three little sisters, they were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw? said Alice, quite forgetting her promise. Treacle, said the Dormouse, without considering at all this time. I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. Let's all move one place on. He moved on as he spoke, and the Dormouse followed him. The March Hare moved into the Dormouse's space, and, the, and Alice, rather unwillingly, took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got any advantage from the change, and Alice was a good deal worse off than before, as the March Hare had just upset the milk jug onto his plate. Alice did not wish to offend the Dormouse again, so she began very ca cautiously. I, I don't, but I don't understand. Where did they draw the treacle from? You can, you can draw water out of a Water well, said the Hatter, so I should think you can draw treacle out of a treacle well, eh? <laughs> Stupid! But they were in the well, Alice said to the Dormouse, not choosing to notice the last remark. Of course they were, said the Dormouse. Well in! This answer so confused poor Alice that she let the Dormouse go on for some time without interrupting it. They were learning to draw. The Dormouse went on, yawning and rubbing its eyes, for it was getting very sleepy. And they drew all manner of things, everything that begins with an M. <sighs> why, why with an M? said Alice. Why not? said the March Hare. Alice was silent. The Dormouse had closed its eyes by this time and was going off into a doze. But on being pinched by the Hatter, it woke up again with a little shriek and went on. Oh, oh that begins with an M, such as mouse traps and the moon and memory and muchness. You know you say things are much of a muchness. Did you ever see such a thing as a drawing of a muchness? Really? Now you, now you ask me, said Alice, very much confused. I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk, <laughs> said the Hatter. This piece of rudeness was more than Alice could bear. She got up in great disgust and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly 
and either of the of the others took the least notice of her going, though she looked back once or twice, half hoping that they they would call after her. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put the dormouse into the teapot. At any rate, I'll never go there again, said Alice as she picked up her picked her way through the wood. It's the si stupidest tea party I ever was at in all my life. Just as she said this, she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she th she thought. But everything's curious today. I think I may, may as well go in at once. And she went in. Once more she found herself in the long hall and close and close to the little glass table. Now I'll manage better this time, she said to herself, and began by taking the little golden key and unlocking the door that led into the garden. Then she set to work nibbling at the mushroom. She had kept a piece of it in her pocket, till she was about a foot high. Then she walked down the little passage, and then she found herself at last in the gold, beautiful garden, among the bright flower beds and the cool fountains.